Good morning. Today is our last day in Kampala. We've really enjoyed our stay in Kampala uh, and we've realized that Kampala, all the places, all the historical sites that we went yesterday, if you haven't checked that video, please do. Yes. At the Gaddafi Mosque, you can see all those historical sites. It is at the center of, the, of Kampala. So with that, you might not need a guide to take you there. But once you get there, of course, you need someone to explain everything to you. And they usually offer a guide. Today, we are going to check out Baha'i Temple that we missed yesterday. It's usually closed on Mondays and Fridays. And then we'll proceed all the way to Mbarara. We might pass by Entebbe, depending on the time when we'll finish. But we are heading towards Mbarara. Please check out the, the entire journey. It has, it has been a journey from Mombasa. We've come all the way. We went, we stayed in Jinja. We really, we loved Jinja. Jinja is a vibe. And we've come to Kampala. Kampala is also nice. Uh, we are still finishing up before we go all the way to Mbarara. But we really loved Jinja. So let's go and explore Kampala some more. When you go to most of these places in Kampala, you need to dress decently, especially the ladies, you need to dress decently, wear something that, it, I would tell you to, uh, the best thing is wear a long dress, because there are places you cannot get in with, with trousers or tight clothes. There are also some places that you cannot go with, with short clothes, you have to cover, like the mosque, you have to cover your head, and you have to wear, you cannot go in with pants, but you need to wear some dress, a long dress. Checked out, but Baha'i is very close to where we were staying while in Kampala. We are just from Baha'i Temple, so we are not allowed to film inside but we took a few videos on the outside. Uh, Baha'i is a religion. I never knew about it until today. It's a religion that unifies almost all religions. There is mostly the Islam, there is Christianity, there is Buddhism, um, there is science. They also allow science because they allow people to freely, independently search for truth. The difference between this temple and many other temples is that this one has nine doors representing the nine messengers of God. It's all about peace, unity, and finding the truth and I think I'm going to google some more about it because it's something very, uh, very new to me but this religion brings all people together. I'm a Christian and anything that unifies people I'm all about it so this is very interesting and it's a place where you can just get in read the holy books or you can just read when you're getting in as you've seen in the rules you must dress modestly it's free of charge. The architecture is quite unique you have seen it, been there yes, since 1958. It was built for three years by the Israelis. Even though Baha'i is a Persian religion, it is originally from Persia, but it unifies everyone. Other than that, today Hadia is dressed properly. Yesterday, yesterday Ali Choma. Choma, I had to tie a, a different colors of scarves as you have seen <laughs> on, the, on the videos. Mm -hmm. But I really had fun. I had fun regardless of Choma fashion-wise. I Good. So guys, we are headed towards Entebbe. We are supposed to go check out some cathedrals. Uh, the, there is a Catholic uh, cathedral and there is also an Anglican cathedral that we are supposed to pass by. But we are running out of time. And because we are taking a road trip, we want to show you guys our trip as much as possible. We want to show you the features that we see along the road and how interesting the road trip will be. So God willing, we'll come back and show you guys those ones. But for now, let's go to Entebbe and then we'll proceed later to Mbarara. That is, that is our plan, but things may change. If you find that Entebbe is more interesting, we must stay, for, we must stay longer, maybe a day, a day more. But so far, our plan is to go to Entebbe and then to Mbarara. So guys, let's go. On our way to Entebbe, we decided to use the Google map to find the easiest route. Guess what, guys? We are in the expressway! Uganda has one, guys. We all know 
of the Nairobi Expressway. Of course, Kenyans, as usual, we have hyped it properly and it's worth the hype. So guys, this is the Uganda Expressway. Unlike the Nairobi Expressway in Kenya, we had to pay the toll fee at the entry point, which is also the toll station before we used it. So the toll fee was 5,000 UGX. That was so new to us. We're used to just getting a ticket and then we we pay the toll fee at the exit point, but this was different. I must admit that the road is very neat. The nature of the real estate on our way to Entebbe suggests that the city is inhabited by middle and high income earners because most of these houses are modern machinists. They are less congested and very organized as compared to Kampala. Now guys, drum rolls! We are getting into Entebbe city. My first impression is that it is organized, clean, and oozes wealthy vibes. I believe that there are some residents of the city who live here and work in Kampala because with the expressway, it is very possible to commute daily, especially if you own a car. As a traveler, you might want to check out the Victoria Mall, which is right at the center of the city, Entebbe Botanical Garden, which also has a historical monument, Mabamba Bay Swamp, with the most unique birds around, they have the equator, the Entebbe Zoo, and so many islands in Lake Victoria, very beautiful, with very unique wildlife. So this, this city has spread out so well, that is why it looks so organized and it's very clean. I repeat, Entebbe is very clean. We are trying to figure out a, a way to get to the beach and we've been told the white beach is the best beach around here, a public beach. So this under there is the airport, Entebbe airport, seeing Lido beach, there is Lido sand beach and then there is white sand beach. I think we are getting in from it. So it is right opposite the airport. You can see there are some aeroplane here. Kampala does not have an airport. You have to come all the way. Guys, the entrance to this place is 10,000 or you have to buy a drink or food for you to get in. That money, I think it is, it is just a small fee for maintaining this beach. Now, my Kenyan brothers, why isn't our, our beaches in Lake Victoria this big? Look at that bird. Oh my God. Adia, are you scared? No. Okay. It's a Maribu stock. Maribu stock? Just walking in the park, guys. There's that pier over there. If you want to take a nice photo, you can take there. And then some activity there. They are cycling into the water. That is so cool. Oh, 
I've been wondering why fish is really expensive in, in Uganda in general. There's a waterfall we went at a very remote place in Ginger, and yet fish was about 1200 Kenya shillings, which is a bit high considering it's just next to a river and a lake. So, my theory is this either they don't fish much, or Ugandans don't enjoy eating fish, that's why it's quite expensive. What's your or in Kenya, we eat a lot of Chinese fish. Mm. We fish a lot. We fish a lot, but we also import a lot of fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even here, it, it was around 50,000 mm -hmm. Ugandan mm -hmm. shillings. That is very expensive compared. Very. Yeah, that is pretty expensive. So guys, we are from the White Sands beach and it is right next to the airport. You can see those airplanes. If you by any chance you get here when the sun is setting, the White Sands beach has a very nice sunset. So you might want to pass by there, but there is an entrance fee. In Tebe town, or is it a city? Looks like a small city. So we are trying to find our way uh, back to the main highway so that we can go to Mbarara and we're expecting to see some very nice views because around the same, in the same route there is Ruenzori, Ruenzori mountain, uh, there are a couple of lakes I think, Sindio? So guys, on my right, this is a research institute. It's a virus research institute. Look at Lake Victoria. Oh, it's showing off. There are multiple places you can be able to see, to have a good view of Lake Victoria, just along the road. Here goes the lake again. We've realized that, uh, okay, based on what we've seen in Entebbe and in Mwanza, we have concluded that the Kenyan side of Lake Victoria is the only side that has not been properly uh, conserved. Because these other sides, woo, because these other sides, you'll see like, like the places are very clean. It looks like someone cleans them every day or something. So guys, our Google map, brought us to this ferry here and the, there's a lot of certainty with the ferry. The next trip will be at 5.30 and that ferry can only take nine cars. When we got there, there were a couple of lorries ahead of us. So we we're not sure whether we would get a spot on the, on the ferry. After the 5.30 trip, the next trip would be at 8.30. Now imagine just staying there waiting for the ferry until that late and then you miss a spot. It won't make sense. So we've decided to reroute and go back using the, the expressway. It will take us some time. It's actually like almost 80 kilometers going backwards, but it is a route that we are sure of. So we are going back. When you come to Entebbe, just know that unless you are very punctual and you, you have enough time, is when you can use the ferry. Otherwise, it might waste your time. So I've bought some jackfruit. This, this one is like 500 Ugandan shillings. And I'm the only one who eats jackfruit in this car. So everyone else is like, finish eating faster because we cannot stand the smell of the jackfruit. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Mm? I love jackfruit. Ooh, I can eat it the entire day. It is still in Tebe. So you can see where people live. It is a very clean place. You, even you can see the streets. Look at this. Very clean.
We are back to the expressway. Tonrudi, Tonrudi. So that's another 5,000. And that's another 5,000 shillings for the expressway. The bridge here. Wow, look at that. That is the expressway. You see, while driving around these Ugandan roads, especially anywhere near Kampala, be careful with the motorcycles. There are so many, and I don't think most of them know the traffic rules, or they know, but they just ignore. There are too many, they are too rowdy on the road, it's difficult to manage them. Kingera. We are at Nawakoda and we are headed to Marara and we've been told that the road is much better, it's, it's, it's good, as good as the one you have seen so far and we are hoping to get there maybe at 8, it's, right now it's 7, 8 or 9, so it's going to be quite a journey. We did not manage to get to Mbarara, so we decided to sleep at Masaka. Apparently it is also a city and we just looked for an accommodation in booking.com and we found this hotel, it's called LC Hotel and we booked like uh, two singles and one, not single, one single and one double at around 8,000 Kenya shillings total. That one is above, way above our budget, but we got here a bit late and we needed to be comfortable because we still have a long journey tomorrow, maybe a hundred kilometers. That one could be an hour, an hour or an hour and a half, depending on the traffic. We realized there's a lot of traffic in Uganda. Guess what? That 8,000 shillings that you're paying for is inclusive of breakfast and sauna. <laughs> hey. I'm telling you, I know in this entire trip we're not going to get another opportunity to, to go to the sauna. So, we're not letting this one pass. We have to go to the sauna. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we decided to sleep at Masaka because 
Uh, we got advice last time when we drove all the way from Kigali to Arusha for, 20, for 24 hours. We got advice from you guys. You know, we usually listen. We got advice from you guys that it's not safe to drive like that at night, especially if it is a place you don't know. Because just in case of any accident, maybe a, a, car, a tire burst or maybe a technical issue, we cannot stand next to the road somewhere in a strange like in a strange place like in a place we've never been to before because we don't know if it is a safe place or not so we took that advice and we decided to sleep at Masaka just to be safe because if we could have driven all the way maybe we could get there at midnight there is it is quite some jam along the along the road and plenty of roadblocks so here we are we bought some Rolex along the road guys by the way tip if you want the best Rolex, go to the place where it is being cooked. Just order yours, let it be cooked while you're looking at it there, and then you cut it when it's still very hot. If you get the ones that have already been made, or it was maybe the chapati was made in the morning and then they just add the eggs, it won't be as fresh as what we got. So today we got very, very fresh Rolex. I've carried mine, I've, I ate like half of it. I've carried another one. Half of uh, the other half, not, not a full one. I've cut the other half and I'm going to take some tea and then I'll go to the sauna. Sauna <laughs> on a budget trip. Oh my god, that is a thorough treat. By the time we leave here in the morning, the bed will be in a very bad shape. So, this is how the room looks. This is a king size bed, it's for the, for the double. Double room has a king size bed and the single room has I think it is a queen size bed. Yes, it's a comfortable mattress. We have a TV here. I don't know if it is working, but I think there is cable TV here. So we'll probably might watch some days TV. Mm. Now the, the only downside to this is that the toilet or maybe the washroom area is a bit narrow. But there is hot water. So we are not going to complain. Yeah, and there is also a balcony. So we are going to, all of us are going to sit here and have our dinner and discuss before we go to the sauna. And then, anyway, let me show you the balcony. I'll show you the balcony in the morning. So guys, stay tuned and let's catch up in the morning. We're getting into the sauna. And then there's the steam from there. Look at our breakfast. Get on These people make me almost miss breakfast. I've very angry person today. Yeah. Welcome to our breakfast. Some Rolex and roasted potatoes. And it looks really delicious. I did almost miss the breakfast. Oh, it's breakfast because some people love the rain. I mean, it started raining in the morning when I was just about to wake up. I just, I just said, 10 more minutes won't kill. I know, it's only <laughs> for an hour. It's now 10. Praise the Lord. This is the only we ever left the apartment. So, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. You can also comment below on what you think of the video. So, let's continue with this adventure in our next episode where we'll be going to the western side of Uganda, which is considered the most beautiful part of the Pearl of Africa. Mm -hmm.